Hello everyone and today I will show you how to make a island shape generator. So to begin with, let's just I'm going to place down a grid. Let me disable these other. All right. So start by just placing a grid, just centered it and uh now we're going to scatter some points on it. It's a bit hard to see cuz there's only one point. Let me turn on the point visualizer. And this is just going to be where the island is going to start. And so create a solver, just an empty solver. And then when you go in here, all I'm doing is some basic facts. So let me open this up. So what is happening is if I move the time, you can see the point is jumping a random distance away. This is a uh, random walk. And so what I'm doing is taking the position on the X and the Z and we're going to randomly move it. And the way that we do it is using the rand function. And then if we have multiple points, we're going to want to take into account that there are multiple points and we wouldn't want the point to have uh, the same random seed as another point. So that's what at PT num is at time is just so every time step uh, plus whatever current point we're at, then it's going to move in this case, the X direction and then time CHF and then this in speed, that's what will generate this uh, parameter. If you click on this button right here, it'll create spare parameters, which is what these two will become. And since they're named the same thing, it they, they'll refer to the same exact slider. So for P dot Z, uh, we're setting the position to be plus the current position. So it'll be current position plus this right here. And so what this is doing is it's doing the same thing as the stuff above with the random uh, with a seed of current time and current point number, but we don't want them to be aligned. So if they were, if these two numbers were the same, since all the parameters are the same, um, the X and Y, it would actually just move diagonally. So to fix that, what we do is we have a different, any number doesn't matter. Um, and adding it to this section um, inside the Rand seed, and that will generate two completely different random numbers. And so this minus 0.5 at the end is because the random number generator will go from zero to one, but we want it to be able to go in negative X, positive X, negative Z, positive Z. So minusing 0.5 will move that range back down to uh, negative 0.5 to positive 0.5. Um, and then, yeah, multiplying it by this slider called speed. Uh, it should be called like distance or something. Basically, it's just how far the point will move each step. And so the real magic is with this trail stop. So the trail stop will accumulate the position of a mesh or a point over time. And so what will happen is as you move, you'll start to notice if you look at the silhouette of the shape, it generally makes almost an island like shape. And that's how I came up with this. So if we just move forward in time, sure. And then the next step is a VDB from particles. So this is going to turn each particle into a spherical VDB volume. And what I have is these need to be pretty small, the voxel size and the point scale radius. Um, the voxel size needs to be uh, more dense than this point radius scale. So 0 0.005 is what worked for me. And then point radius scale is 0 0.06. And that will fill it up. There won't be too many gaps in here. If there is, it's not a big deal because islands have lakes and stuff. So that will work out. So the next step is VDB smooth. That just kind of smooths them all together. It's not super important, but uh, I think it gave better results. So next I use 
um oh actually also on the uh vdb smooth i did six iterations and yeah i used mean value and a filter of one so it would be quite quite smoothing and so converted it to a mesh um i made it adaptive uh so it would use less polygons and just kept the iso value at zero and then transforming it so since it's going to be used for a height field uh we're going to use a height field masked by object so we need to scale this up generally uh it may not be centered because it is using a random point on a grid uh but that's not that big of a deal so just kind of uh scale it up so i scaled it up using the uniform scale and then just hit move centroid to origin and it'll put it to zero 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 um the next step is i use a stash node it will make your houdini file a tiny bit bigger but it's a very convenient way to store your mesh this is going to look a little bit different because the seed was a little bit different but it is nearly identical to the previous island so first i place down this empty height field and then the most important step right here is the height field mask by object and so this will transfer the shape that we generated using this randomly walked particle that we accumulated over time and turned into a mesh it will appear on here which looks pretty island like and uh gives us relatively natural results could probably have more noise on the edges but i think for a starting point it is a very good place and then what i did is i plugged in the mask into the mask part of the height field noise and just plugged into the height field noise um played around with the settings amplitude so i gave it a nice kind of perlin -y noise uh the next thing is a blur because these edges are really really steep right here so uh the best way is just to give a general blur um this will help erosion uh which is the next step and so i'm gonna push this back down to one as the starting frame and on height field erode it will just erode this height field so i will I found that 14 looked really good. Um, the only thing I changed was the, I think the only thing I changed in here was the seed and the amount of precipitation. It was lower, so I just increased it. Uh, I thought it looked better, but do it to taste. You can play around with it, get better height field options than this. This is just um, mostly to test the shape. Uh, so then I did a mask by feature this is getting the this is using the uh height mask by height and i just wanted to get the shores where sand would be on a beach and then i plug it into a mask blur so it's not super hard edges just smooth that out a little bit and then i smooth the mesh out itself which i think looks much more natural because the sand wouldn't be way that like a mountain would or you know other kinds of things like standstone etc and then this visualize just makes it easier to see you know the height field and the different heights um it's important to remove the tinting because the otherwise the mask will still be there this red ring so just remove tinting and then you won't see it anymore and then compute range will calculate the range of your mesh from lowest to highest so it'll give an accurate coloring for here this won't show up in the final render, but it is a good visualization tool. Then I simply use a convert height field and turn it back into a mesh. And that's how I generated this island shape. The rendering, there's tons of different ways you can go about rendering it. Um, you know, with placing rocks, pebbles, trees, branches, tons of different things. Um, this is just a 
good starter for an island shape. There can be many more tweaks and perhaps I'll make another video on going further into rendering techniques. I just did a basic render using Redshift um, and a simple color mask using height. Uh, anyway, if this was helpful, uh, give it a like and subscribe for more videos. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.